Chapter 4 With the scouts having returned, and their information now at hand, the clan only had to wait for the healers to decide if Blake was well enough to travel, or if she would need to be left behind. The waiting and inactivity was hard on all of them. These were not women to just lie idly about. These were warriors who had left behind families. Having said goodbye to their children and their husbands, their parents and their friends, as well as to the trades they each knew and worked at so well. The furnaces, now sitting cold, awaiting the smelter's return. The farmer's plots languishing and crops waiting to be picked. The mines with ores overflowing, now sitting empty, longing for the clank of the pickaxe. Each of them had lives to return to, yet they had answered the call and they would follow it through till the end, whenever that might be. Scrubs had kindly seen to it that Charmed and Nishi found a quiet table to visit with their mother, Jerrietta. The three of them sat talking in the corner, and sometimes other ladies stopped by briefly to say hello, and some even to be tugged quietly into a seat by Jerrietta. Lady silently hoped that these readings were positive, but she knew that no matter what the message given, the ladies were strong of mind and would not let Jerrietta's readings distract them from their task. All four leaders were now at their own table, away from most of the sisters, and what few patrons were left in the bar. Them and Scrubs were filling in the details of the report for Moody and Lady. It is mostly what we already know. The Duke is gathering many of the noobs to him, and the ones that our warriors killed were seeking information on us and our numbers. They seem to be most interested in how many of us there were, and to make sure that you are with us, Fem said, looking at Lady. Scrubs bristled, replying, Well, of course that is his interest, the fool. How does he not have the brain of a flea and knows not when to stop? I, for one, will be happy to show him. Lady placed her hand over Scrubs' arm without saying a word to calm her. Moody watched this exchange with knowing eyes and said, We will stop him, and this time will be the last that he bothers any of us. All four leaders nodded, and quietly began to outline the next steps in their journey. After a while, Scrubs left the table and went to check on Blake's condition, and Moody stood to walk about the bar. She would stop at each table, smiling and touching some of the ladies in reassurance. Making sure that everyone was in the right frame of mind was something she did extremely well. Her calm demeanor and positive presence had always been a comfort to each of the sisters. Now left alone, Fem eyed Lady. What troubles you? asked Fem. Lady smiled. I don't even have to ask how you know I am troubled, do I? Fem did not return the smile, but said, Not after all these years, I would think not. So tell me, what is it? The turmoil brewed in Lady's mind, although she knew what she must ask of her longtime friend, and she hesitated before continuing. Sister, we cannot go into this battle with the limited information we have. It would be suicide. And even though these women trust us and would follow us to the ends of this world, we cannot ask it of them. Fim looked at her harder, frowning a bit. 
but did not reply. She knew something else was coming. There is something I can ask of you, although I am afraid it will bring you great pain, and for that I am sorry. There is one person who may have information to help us in the battle that lies ahead. She waited for only a moment until the light of understanding dawned in Fem's eyes. Lady hated watching the wave of emotions that then crossed her face. Fem's was a face that was remarkable and not only lit the room when she smiled, but made others want to smile with her. Fem was quite a beauty, although she never seemed to know it. Her eyes and smile were two of her best assets, but her hair being the one thing that made everyone stop and stare. It cascaded over her shoulders and back like liquid sunshine, almost flashing when a breeze rippled through it. The long lazy curls helping the golden highlights shimmer in a million different directions. For most, the urge to reach out and bury their hand in her hair was overwhelming, but they did not. She was a warrior, after all. With all of her allure, her strength was also something people noticed. Those who knew her would tell you of her fierce, protective spirit and unyielding loyalty. And then, as an afterthought, they would mention her loveliness, and yes, her hair. To have them as a friend meant to have an amazing ally. You knew that she would never waver in her devotion to that relationship unless you, yourself, caused it. No one would ever shake her loyalty to you, and she would fight for that connection to the death, and not her own. As a friend, she was a treasure of immeasurable riches. Lady hated to cause her friend even a moment's grief, and she knew she was about to do so, even if it was for the cause. Though Fem was a beauty, she was also a warrior of the highest class. She would stand firm in battle and could wither an opponent with not more than a stare. Her range and mage skills were some of the highest in the land. Lady knew she would fight and fight hard, and if that meant facing this part of her past, she would do so with fierce determination. Never had she backed down from a battle, and this would surely not be the first. Anyone who had ever been in combat with her knew that for her to have your back meant you were more than covered. And she was not only confident herself, but she instilled that same confidence in those who fought alongside her. Lady said finally, We need any information he might have. She waited patiently for Fem to digest this information. She watched as her longtime friend struggled with what was a battle between her heart and her head. Lady could see as the battle was won and the acceptance came over her face. I know, she finally said quietly. Lady reached across the table, taking Fem's hand in hers to comfort and reassure. It's necessary. Her friend only nodded as Lady continued. And if you leave soon, with only one or two as an escort, you could travel more quickly. We could await you in Taverly Village before we cross into Falador and head north to cross the border. The druids will provide us shelter, and the information you bring us may influence our direction. They sat quietly for a moment, each lost in their own thoughts, both pondering the current situation and what this might mean to Fem. She would be taking a step back into her past for the better of the clan. Her history with him was filled with turmoil and grief for theirs had been an epic romance of both happiness and loss. The gods had conspired to keep them apart, throwing up obstacles and hindrances that not even their love could overcome. In the end, they had been pitted against one another in a battle neither had won. 
but had cost both dearly. Finally, Fem spoke. I don't even know where to find him. But I do, said a voice behind them. They both turned to see Jerrietta standing beside their table, her hands clasped before her, and a small smile on her lips. Lady stood. I think I shall leave you ladies to talk while I make arrangements for two of the sisters to accompany you on your journey. I think Misty and MTA would be best for this assignment. Both have the skills and can travel with haste, and I believe speed will be of the essence. She glanced at Jerrietta, then back at Fem. Please, let me know your destination. And she walked away. Jerrietta moved to take the seat Lady had occupied, and then put her hands on Fem's just as Lady had. She continued to smile as she turned Fem's hands over palm up on the table. You are not quite a believer, I see. Fem stared at her intently and replied, A believer of the sight? No. I have never put much stock in those telling me my future when I know it has not yet been written. Oh, it is not your future, I see, but the choices you may face, and those choices decide your fate and your future. Jerrietta said, while rubbing her aged, gnarled fingers over the palms of Fem's hand and staring at them as if reading a book. I see much in your hands. I see from the wear of the string of your bow, the marks from the runes of your magic. She paused and then looked up at Fem. And the longing to touch his face again as he looks in your eyes. Fem jerked her hands back, quickly hiding them under the table. I told you I don't believe in all this. She had become agitated, not wanting to hear more, yet needing to know. Not believing, yet wanting to, with all of her heart. But you pull away when I touch on something you know to be true, Jerrietta said, completely undisturbed by Fem's actions. I pulled away because I don't have time for this. We have a battle to fight and win. She shoved her chair back and stood up to leave the table. Jerry had to look down at her own hands now. You won't win this one without him. Don't say that, Fem said, looking quickly around her to make sure none of the sisters had heard. We will win this fight. We are warriors answering a call, and we will succeed. The ladies of the Red Dragon always do. Oh, yes, you will. But you will win it, in part because you will choose to put your feelings aside and go to him. I do not say he will win the battle for you, but the knowledge he has is necessary. He does not even know of your plight. He knows only that the Duke is causing problems. And yet, he lost the will to fight for others when he could no longer fight for himself. And what was most dear to him? That is you, my dear. And now, he sits in the tavern north of Varok. He is resting after a long journey and many monsters fought. She looked up at Fem. And he sits there thinking of you. Fem's stern expression softened as she sank back into her chair. You can't know these things. You just can't. I haven't seen him for years now. She stopped, realizing what she was saying, and looked imploringly at Jerrietta. I don't know if I can go through this again. I don't know if I can take it. Jerrietta again smiled her knowing smile. I know many things that I cannot know. I know your heart was ripped apart when you had to face him with swords clashing. Just as I know that this choice is one you have already made, child. And who is to say it will be exactly as it was before? You have both come a long way in your short lives, and many things have changed. Many things that hindered you before are no longer obstacles. You will know when you look in his eyes, that what I say is true. But you must hurry to him. 
The smile left her face, and her eyes lit with purpose, her voice becoming stronger with urgency. His need for you is just as great, and beyond that need is something greater. He is in grave danger. You must convince him it is warmer by the fire. Confusion now flooded Fim's face. Warmer by the fire? That makes no sense to me. Jerrietta's grin returned, as she said, It won't to him either, but you must persuade him, and that I know you can do. She stood and took Fem's hands once more, pulling her to stand. I have the faith that you do not, child. You will find the way, and now I must leave you. Lady is growing impatient and wishes for you to be on with your journey. Fem looked behind Jerrietta and could see Lady far across the bar watching them, and it did seem she was anxious for them to finish their conversation. She looked once more at Jerrietta, who had never turned around. You are sure? she asked quietly. I mean, about everything. It is not I who needs to be sure. And she walked away. Lady came quickly to join Fim, who was still pondering what the old seer had told her. Are you all right, my sister? Fim gathered her strength, and brushing her long hair behind her shoulders, she reached to retrieve her ranger's helmet from the table. I am fine and ready to travel. It seems I am heading east to Verak and the bar that lies there in the north. Are MTA and Misty ready to go? Lady now seemed to be trying to read her face, just as Jerrietta had read her hands. Yes, they are both prepared to travel quickly wherever you may lead. MTA has her dragon sword at the ready, and Misty has her bow and a quiver full of runite arrows. But I implore you, please travel with caution, and quickly meet us in Taverly, where we will wait for you in word of your mission. You did not choose them, because they are swift or good with their weapons, Fem said, challenging Lady to disagree. No, I did not. Those were only part of my reasons, and as you apparently well know, I wanted them to be with you for support, and I can only hope you don't need it. I will not fail you or the clan, my lady. Lady smiled at her. I know you won't. It is not failure that concerns me, sister. I worry he will upset you, and you will kill off our only source of information. Fem laughed, and the tension eased from both of them. I will try my best to refrain from taking off his head. They hugged for a moment, and then Fem snatched up her pack and strode to the door. Misty and MTA were right behind her, as the sisters called out words of safety and encouragement. Lady said a small prayer to the gods, Sarah Dorman, to keep them safe on their journey, and to keep Fem's heart in one piece. Thank you.